Hello truckers and welcome back to American Truck Simulator. We are currently in the middle of a load carrying a very large cable reel from Kingman, Arizona to Oakland, California. We're about halfway through and we're gonna go ahead, get back on the road and get this thing delivered. So let's get away from, oh, get my head tracking turned off so I can look at my map or look at my uh, mirrors. All right. Yeah, 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 you do have to let me out there, friend. All right, off we go on to the road, and here we are. Unfortunately, most of this load is going through California, so we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to. We're gonna be stuck at 55 miles an hour for this for the rest of this trip. That's kind of lame, but it is what it is. Got about six and a half hours, according to what the GPS is saying, which. Remember that being what we had left. Maybe I'm. Uh, yeah, I think we had like 12 hours. That's fine. Six and a half hours is enough time for enough time for a single episode for for finishing out an episode. I can live with that. So if you're just joining us, we are currently in the process of trying to uh, work our way through to buy every one every one of the trucks, every every single one of the trucks, and uh, put a driver in it, upgrade it, get it all ready to go, and that's going to kind of be the end game goal for the series so you know once we get one of every truck and have it fully built out and ready to go that'll kind of signify the end of the primary phase of whatever we're doing for this particular series and then if there is enough of a viewership by the time we get to enough of a viewership to justify continuing to play um you know i'll start taking some suggestions for what you guys would like to see for the series going forward um, otherwise, I gotta try to find something else that people actually wanna watch. <laughs> you know, YouTube's a business if you're gonna try to make money at it and you gotta, you gotta make decisions based off of uh, what the audience wants and not necessarily, you know, what you, uh, what you, I don't know. I mean, I'm not even trying to say that I, what did that say? I think it said keep them on straight. Uh, it, I'm not even really necessarily trying to say. I, like, I kind of enjoy doing the American trucks. I, I kind of enjoy the truck simulator thing, but it's one of those I like to do it every once in a while. I don't necessarily like. Um, I don't necessarily enjoy doing it over and over and over again. So uh, I'm perfectly content to keep making truck simulator content, but it need it really needs to be one of those things where there's enough people who have an in, there's enough people that have an interest in it to justify spending the time doing it. So yeah. Uh, it's, I don't know, uh, I just started farming, I just started farming simulator 22, and, uh, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. I'm having a lot of fun playing that right now, and there's a lot more to do in that game than there is in this one, so hopefully, uh, that, hopefully that series will take off, uh, like, uh, hopefully that series will take off as well as my Elite Dangerous stuff has. And I'll be able to convert that into a second video series that's doing well. I mean, I'm, try I'm ultimately I'm trying to get to the point where, you know, I have multiple different games that are getting lots of views, so that I can continue growing the channel into something that starts making some serious money. Uh, I was recently able to monetize my channel, uh, fully monetize my channel, having hit the thousand subscriber mark. Straight. Continue straight. Uh, and you know. Uh, I'm, I'm making about as much money as I thought I was going to, <laughs> which is to say not very much. Uh, but you know, that's all, that's all dependent on people watching the videos and being exposed to ads and, uh, people choosing to join the channel as members and, uh, you know, super thanks and things like that. I mean, there's a, there's a bunch of different ways to earn money on YouTube. Now, it doesn't help that YouTube takes an exorbitant share of the money that we, that, ugh, dude, I got a, I got a $2 super thanks. And after YouTube was done with it, I received 98 cents. Like that's pretty ridiculous to be perfectly honest with you. A fifty percent, fifty percent take of something that some that, that a fan decided to give to me. I mean, come on, that's that's ridiculous. I, I can understand, you know, twenty, maybe thirty percent. You know, they have administrative costs and all that, but a fifty percent commission. I mean, dude, that's that's pretty unreasonable. I'm doing all the work here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's uh, that's. I don't know how they justify that. 
And uh, I believe I've, I've had I haven't really sat down and looked at my membership num my membership numbers yet, um, but I believe it's something similar for. I I'm I'm, gonna, I'm 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 putting the caveat because I do need to remember to sit down and look and actually compare the the actual money that I got from the the the, the very few and a very appreciated channel members that I have. Um, I haven't figured out how to isolate that number yet, Continue but straight. I know what I've set the prices at, and I just need to look and see what I actually what, what's actually you know pending in my account for those, so I can see that. I, I understand, you know, YouTube is YouTube has to take a share of that to help pay for their stuff, but you know, when I see that they gave me a two dollar super thanks, and the number that comes across is ninety eight cents, that's unreasonable. That's unreasonable, and I don't. Uh, you can't. There's no. There's no justifying a 50% commission or a 50% whatever they whatever whatever it is you want to call it. That that's unreasonable. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I understand they're providing the infra infrastructure and all of that, but at the end of the day, the only reason that the person provided the super thanks was because I made some content and they liked it. So you know, how about we how about we allocate those funds based off of you know where that where that super thanks actually came from? So yeah, that's that's really it's really frustrating to have you know what could have potentially been two dollars turned into one dollar rather than having two dollars turned into maybe like a dollar sixty or a dollar fifty or something like that what? i know it's fifty cents okay. but i mean if they're going to continue taking half of my half of the money that people people volunteer to give me then that's seriously going to impede my take ability to grow spot. as a channel oh we need to take it right here i'm too busy talk too busy talking and not not busy enough uh driving <laughs> okay let's uh Let's focus up here so we can get onto the freeway. Left turn ahead. Take the next left. Okay. I could see in the front left mirror that my trailer did not hit anything, so that's good. Down to five hours and twenty minutes. I know there's going to be all kinds of opinions on any of the subjects that I choose to discuss on any of these videos, uh, and you know I'm actually kind of happy that I actually have something to talk about because most of the time I get on this particular video and I just don't, I just don't, I don't have anything to talk about. <laughs> It's partially because this is the first video I do every day, and it's, you know, unfortunately it ends up kind of being my warm-up video. Because there isn't very much to actually do in the video, and it kind of gets my mind realigned to get into the video recording process. So usually by the time I'm done with this video, <clears throat> I'm kind of fully woken up, and I'm, I'm fully focused, and I'm fully ready to go. And then I move into my Elite Dangerous content, and you know, I have to prioritize that because it's the one getting the most attention. Um, you know, unfortunately, that's just that's just the way that's just the way content creation has to work. I have to put my focus on the stuff that's having the most impact for the channel, and that has to get that has to get my best effort. <laughs> and it just sucks because I know I know that there's a lot of people out there who enjoy the trucking content because there are other big trucking content creators out there who you know they primarily do trucking content well I don't know I don't know that they primarily do trucking content that's a good hmm I have to look at that because I was I was watching a very large channel uh, Jeff uh, Jeff Favano or how, how, I'm not sure how you pronounce his name he has I think he has over a million subscribers and he does a lot of trucking content but at the same time he also has a really expensive sim setup that he also includes a video of while he's driving uh, I have to imagine that contributes quite a bit to his view time or his views at least when it comes to the trucking stuff. Um, and I think he also just has a bunch of other stuff that he does on his channel and he just he has the kind of life where he's always doing a bunch of cool stuff so you know he's been blessed with the kind of money that allows him to participate in things and then he can come and get on his channel and talk about it I sit around in my house 24 7 because I don't like to go anywhere <laughs> I mean you know 
once we get once we get back in the travel trailer and we're on the road and hopefully starting to visit places, I'll, I'll obviously have quite a bit more to talk about. Uh, but it's kind of a catch twenty two situation where you know I I need to I need to have a mobile income to be able to go and do that, and I'm trying to turn YouTube into that. But then I also need interesting stories to make the videos more interesting. If I'm going to have, if I'm going to make that a part of a main part of the thing that I'm doing, so I need YouTube to grow so I can go get interesting stories to talk about. But then I need interesting stories to talk about to help my YouTube channel grow. <laughs> it's one of those. It's this. You know, it's one of those ridiculous paradoxes of life where, you know. You're you're stuck in this limbo for a long time until some until one of the things that you need to change is one of the things that you need to change finally changes, and uh, you just you have no real control over that situation. As much as I I mean I would love it if my YouTube channel blew up tomorrow, uh, you know jumped up to 50,000 50, subscribers or 100,000 subscribers, but it just, it almost never works that way, especially for, especially for gaming channels. If I, if I, if I had some kind of cool ability or special thing that I could do where I could start a channel and have 100,000 subscribers overnight, um, you know, obviously that would be awesome, but gaming channels almost never do that because there's just so many of us. There's so many of us out there making gaming content and, um, you know, the only edge I think that I have over most of the channels out there is just that I have been trained in several things that allow me to present myself in a very clear and articulate way that doesn't come across as, you know, unconfident or, you know, whatever term you whatever term you want to use for somebody who just doesn't present themselves very well um, and having served as a marine and having made my way up to you know the staff and CO ranks you know I, I received a lot of leadership training and that forces you to get outside of whatever introverted tendencies you might have and stand up in front of people and tell them what to do <laughs> you know, so you can't you can't be in that environment and have a lack of confidence in, you know, being able to present yourself. And then, you know, I was going through college and I was forced to do a bunch. Of, you know, when I got out of the Marine Corps, I was I was going to, I was go getting my business degree. And that required a lot of presentations, uh, presenting information in front of the class. And, you know, the Marine Corps prepared me for that and then I just got really used to presenting myself in front of people so you know there are a lot of different things that allow me to present myself in a way that makes me more interesting to listen to than probably most of the gaming content creators out there because most gamers don't most gamers aren't forced in their real life to present themselves in public in any reason in any serious way so they don't have any practice at it, and it takes them a long time, if ever, to get to the point where they're able to get get on a microphone and start talking in a way that makes people more likely to listen than your average. I just I'm here doing this, and but you know what I mean. So I don't know. It's just sorry, guy. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to slow down and move out of my way because we are we are it, we are already doing 55, and it takes long enough to get through this. Um, so you know, and then. But then the other side of it is just this new AI revolution that's happening right now is just, I don't know. I don't know. Continue straight. I'm, I'm pretty nervous about this new AI, the, the, this AI revolution that's coming on because of course the moment when I, it, my whole life has kind of been, I'm getting in on the back end of everything. Um, you know, when I was in my high school band, I got into the band as it was starting its decline from being one of the best bands in the state. I was in the Goose Creek High School marching band. And, you know, we went, my first my first year, and I believe my sophomore year, we went to the state marching band competition and we almost beat we were the we were at we were in the largest we were in the largest category and we were fighting for first place. But then my junior and senior year, um, you know, we were starting our decline, and I believe they continued to get worse after that. And then I went into the Marine Corps, and it felt like every band I went to, by the time I got to it, it was starting a decline of some sort, and it just wasn't as good. Now, you know, you, you look at those things and you say, well, you know, 
who's what's the common denominator there you yeah but when you're in a group of things like that and you're not really the one in charge of everything you, i can't really i can't really say that it was me that caused that uh was i a contributing factor i don't know i mean i was a really i was uh i consider myself a fairly competent uh a fairly competent musician or at least i was 10 years ago i was uh, you know, I had one of my officers in charge tell me that I was one of the best clarinet players in the Marine Corps, and you know, he wasn't—he wasn't the kind of person to bullshit you. So, you know, I, I feel like uh, we had uh, we had the president's own Marine band come and visit and do some master classes for our units for for a couple of different bands, a couple of different times. And to be perfectly honest with you, I wasn't particularly impressed with their clarinet players. So not, and not, I don't mean that to say that they were bad. I just mean that to say that, you know, I was confident enough in my ability that I was like, oh, you know, I could probably, I could probably make that band if I put in a little bit, put in a little bit more work than I do. So, <clears throat> you know, I go through all of that. You know, I know it sounds like bragging. That's not really the point. The point is that, you know. I I am a I was a pretty decent clarinet player, and I don't feel like it was my skill level that was significantly contributing to the status of these units and bands and all of these things as I was getting to them. It's just you know, uh, it's it's kind of like how my whole generation is right now. My whole generation, this my you know I'm at the very very beginning of the millennial generation. We just kind of got screwed. We're the entire world is kind of going backwards right now, and. It just sucks because the the peak of civilization as far as you know the average person and freedom and all of that stuff is just it feels like it's going backwards I don't know I'm trying I'm, 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 I'm gonna pivot away from that particular discussion because I don't want to get into politics that's um, my political views are not are, are frankly none of your business and yours are none of mine and I, I'm not interested in starting arguments in the comments because I, I just I have no tolerance for drama but uh, the point I'm trying to make is, is that in a lot of things in life, I feel like I'm getting to these, I'm getting to things as they're starting to die. Continue straight. And while I understand that YouTube probably, you know, YouTube content creators probably still have a little while left, AI scares me because while it's cool to think of creating tools that level the playing field and make it easier for more and more people to get into content creation, that completely removes the talent portion of it. You know what I mean? So those of us who actually have the ability to get up and present to people no longer have an edge because if anybody can just sit down and put up an AI voice that sounds natural and tell a computer to, you know, create whatever random idea it is that they have in their head and make a video out of it, well then what do we what, what do we do what do, what do the rest of us do we have to we have to sit down and now instead of being able to just you know use our talents to create something we have to completely shift and figure out how to do it that way and then now not only are we competing with the insane number of you know talented people you know which is a small portion of the population but there's already so many that we have to compete with who have talent but then now it's literally everybody it's literally we're competing with literally everybody and that's just, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. It's scary. I'm not saying that we should do that. We should necessarily do anything to stop it because that would be that would be super selfish. I don't want to be a selfish person. You know, the world changes and you have to learn to adapt to it. But I'd be lying if I said it kind of sucks that I'm finally getting into YouTube and trying to turn this into a business for myself and trying to finally get strike out on my own and do my own thing. And then it's, you know, as I'm starting to do that, this AI revolution start is, is starting to really gain some steam and it's getting to the point where now not only am I going to have to compete with the actually talented con content creators who have, you know, figured out a way to present themselves in a way that makes people want to watch, but now I have to compete with every vaguely creative person who can type a prompt into a computer. And that's just, you know, it sucks. I'm, it, Honestly, it just sucks. It sucks to ha it sucks that every time I get to something, <laughs> it turns out that oh yeah, we're at the tail end of that, my friend. You waited too long to get into it, and I just not, I don't have the I don't have the foresight to be able to look at something and figure out how to get in early on it. 
I'm very risk averse. So when I look at things, I'm like, I, I look at it and I'm like, uh, I don't know about that. That's kind of, uh, uh, you know what I mean? So <laughs> it's just, it's just one of those things. I know, I know this is a lot of complaining. I'm not really trying to make it complaining. I'm more just trying to explain uh, why my thought process, why I feel like I'm always getting in on the end of things and why I feel like, you know, this, this YouTube thing is yet another one of these situations where I just, I, I waited, I, I'm, I'm in that spot where yet again, um, I'm, I'm, I missed the boat on something. Whether it's because I waited too long to get into it, or it's because this generation that I'm in is just constantly getting screwed, or, you know, it just, it is, it is, it is what it is. Yeah. I, there's nothing I can do about it. Complain, I can complain about it, and I can talk about it here because it gives me something to talk about while I'm driving down the road. But at the end of the day, I gotta, you know, we gotta figure out what we're doing. Um, you know, complaining never, complaining doesn't make any, complaining doesn't change anything unless you're talking unless you're complaining to the right people and i don't know the right people <laughs> there's always that i don't well it, it doesn't help that you know i don't like dealing with people i don't like obligating myself to relationships with people that i don't even know i'm you know you know i don't, I don't know how to explain that i'm antisocial. i don't like i don't like being in i don't like talking to people I like having a, a very small select group of people that I have in my life and then everybody else is just, you know, leave me alone. <laughs> uh, and you know, I realize that as a YouTuber, I can't really hold on to that because I have to, I have to be able to make sure that my audience knows that I appreciate them. And I do, I do appreciate you guys. I appreciate you very much. Uh, but I am very averse to social interaction. I very much like to just chill out be peaceful, play my video games, um, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get to where I can travel around the country. And I'm hoping that, you know, may, maybe one of the things that will happen is that the, the gaming channel will grow just enough to where I we can afford to get on the road and then I can start making some travel content. I think that I think travel content would be much harder for people to compete with because it's going to be much, it's going to be the next ride. It's going to be one of those things where people want the genuine article when they're looking at these things and AI generated locations of a place are just not the same are not going to be the same thing. And then there's also, you know, the other thing that I'm kind of hoping for that I've said in a previous video is, is I'm kind of hoping that we'll get to the point where people will value real life human content rather than just AI stuff. And I'm hoping, what I'm hoping is, is that we're, we're going to have that uh, uncanny valley effect that happens in animation where <laughs> Uh, they create animations that are so realistic, but not, but they're never able to quite get it enough to where people are like completely convinced. And you have this uncomfortable feeling when you watch it because it's so close to being human-like, but it's, but then it's not, and it's kind of creepy. And you're you're looking at it, and you're like, ooh, I don't, I kind of don't like this. I kind of don't like this. There's a reason why a lot of animation is still very kind of cartoony, and it's because of that uncanny valley effect where you get kind of creeped out watching something that looks really human but not quite they're not able to capture the essence of a human being and it just doesn't work out quite quite the right way so i'm and i'm kind of hoping that you know content creation in general kind of follows that path where people are like wow this is really cool but i miss that real human interaction that i get from somebody who actually is create sitting down and creating a con creating content i don't know it's just it's just a lot of it's just a lot of, a lot of different thoughts that pop through my head and you know for whatever reason I'm I'm awake enough today to actually be able to talk about it. <laughs> right turn ahead. All right, I believe that this is an articulated load, so realistically, we shouldn't have to back this one up. It would be very difficult to back this up. Arriving so your destination. Let's see if we can find This gets dropped off. Oh, of course it's backwards. Um, we may just. All right, so I'm I'm just gonna have to go through and drive over some curbs and do some. 
unreasonable stuff because I didn't turn the way I was supposed to. I had a feeling I was probably supposed to go through that other direction, but it just didn't, it just, it looked really tight. We'll get as close as we can, and if I can't get it lined up, we'll just skip the parking, the trailer parking part. Okay. Let's get ourselves lined up. Or maybe, we, I mean, I guess we can just go around. Alright, we'll just go around. Alright, what's the best way in through here? So that's out, I think. Let's take the widest possible turn over here because this trailer load is relatively long and I'm not interested. Excuse me, I'm not interested in having a crash. Oh, thanks a lot, Mr. Tanker, for parking right there. What an asshole. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to swing out a little bit wide to hopefully get the trailer lined up where it's supposed to be. And then hopefully we can get this parked this time. All right, so hopefully you guys had lots of fun. Be sure to click that like button so the YouTube algorithm knows that you did and sends the video out to as many people as possible. If you're not subscribed, please consider doing so now so that when the next video comes out, it will show up in your feed and you'll be able to watch it as soon as it becomes available. Channel members do get early access to all of my content, so be sure to click that join button, check out the list of options available there and decide if any of those are right for you. Uh, your direct support is greatly appreciated and a critical component to helping to turn this into a full-time gig. So again, thank you very much for your time. Hope you guys enjoyed the trip, and I'll see you for the next one.